Uh, right. Hello, everybody. I'm Lucas. I'm a software engineer at Google. I'm an Angular core contributor. Hello, uh, I'm Pavel. I'm working in Amadeus, and uh, I'm a long-time Angular JS contributor. So today, both Lucas and me are uh, representing uh, Angular One team. Unfortunately, Pete, uh, our team lead, couldn't make it to the NGCon this year. Fix the mic. <laughs> I can move it. Is it better? No. No. And OK, I can keep it. <laughs> That's good. Uh, OK, so like they unfortunately Pete, our new team lead, couldn't make it to NGCon this year. Uh, but we still will try to do our best to uh, present the state of one Google run. So uh, we want to uh, show you what happened in the last six months with Angular 1. And we had some very exciting things to show you. Right, but before diving into the content of 1.4, uh, let's look at the, uh, what people are building with the current version of AngularJS. So as Brother Nigo was saying, Angular 1 is today the framework version that you can use uh, to deploy production ready applications. And people do this, and just like look at this tweet, it just says it all, right? Yeah, it's, we're really excited. Oh. And we're really excited what the community is doing, with uh, big partners uh, doing it, and it really uh, helps us a lot. It's, uh, Angular 1 is really uh, used by a lot of big companies. This is just amazing. Right, so I know that you all waiting for the futures and the bug fixes that went into 1.4. But before we start, we should really take time to thank all the people who took time uh, to contribute the bug reports, uh, pull requests, uh, or documentation fixes. Like, without your continuous support, those releases wouldn't look the same. One thing we want to highlight is the community engagement. It's, we actually had uh, that every two weeks, 100,000 unique visitors go and engage with the Angular repository. This is putting pull requests, putting issues, commenting on issues. It's just amazing. Uh, six months ago, the same chart only showed 50,000. This is the, in the last six months, it doubled. This wow. is just great. Right, thank you. The best part of it is just that those people are not just coming to the GitHub and looking around, like reading. They're actually coming there and creating the content. So like looking at the other stats, you can see that we had over 1,600 new pull requests and issues. Uh, and we had like almost 200 new first-time contributors. This is just amazing. Thank you. Out of the contributors, we want to highlight to is Martin and Shahar. They are two new core contributors. They step up, they put the effort, and just made it. Uh, another thing that is really great is that 50% of all contributions, all PRs, all com uh, commits, uh, all comments, and all issues came from the community. This is just great. 50% is really uh, something most but my mic just stopped my work, that uh, most uh, projects would just love. This is just great. So it happens for the reason because we really value all the pull requests that you are sending. And oftentimes, we will uh, prioritize the existing pull request uh, over the code that we could, as the core members, do. Uh, because we really believe in growing this community, this pool of people who can actually hack on the core. So keep them coming. So one thing we want to highlight now is what happened with the new releases? What is new, what, happened, what actually happened in the last six months? OK, so <clears throat> let's start with the 1.3 uh, that was announced during the NG, uh, NG Europe. Uh, and the, from this moment, we had 14 patch releases. And I guess at this point, you are really used to the fact that every week, there is a new release with the fresh set of bug fixes. So in 1.3, we had 14. Uh, patch releases like this. They fixed over 90, comment, uh, 90 uh, mm, issues. Uh, we put some small uh, features without breaking changes and the small risk of regressions, as well as much like a tons of documentation improvements. Yeah, but we only, not only focus on bug fixes and uh, it's 
we really want to have a new version that actually make uh, not only fixes it but provides new features. Right, so we were not only just fixing bugs in parallel to 1.3 efforts, we're working on the new major release uh, with the new features. So the uh, 1.4 release candidate is going to be out next week and it represents like over 650 commits worth of work. Uh, in, in those commits we've got 35 plus new features. I can't give you like an exact number because it's still growing. Um, we fixed over 140 bugs uh, and we've got some performance improvements that we are going to talk about in a sec. It's one thing to highlight is that uh, whenever you see a commit, these are high quality commits. I don't know if you engage with the repository, it's we take the time to be sure that those commits are high quality, those are, uh, it's rebased, it's really, uh, it's, the numbers are really don't show, it's, it's those 650, it's really are high quality yeah. commits. So I guess like all the people are waiting for the new features, right? Let's dive into this. Yeah, so what's new? It's uh, what's new with 1.4? And so, so out of 1.4, we want to highlight a few uh, things, a few modules that really make the difference. One is the new router. It's, uh, this was uh, Ray, uh, Brian, uh, uh, sorry, Brad and Igor said about this. Uh, um, Brian will said, uh, we'll have a presentation on this uh, later today. The new router really fixes a lot of the issues that uh, you will you are struggling with it takes a, a lot of feedback and a lot of uh, improvements from other projects that also solve this. All right, so Brian is just speaking after us, so just be sure to attend it. The next big part of 1.4 uh, is internationalization. So for many uh, folks that are writing for the uh, applications for the global audience, you know that like 1.3 is having some facilities built in uh, to help you with those applications but it's still lacking in uh, some areas and translations being one of the most important ones. So we are really excited to share that like in 1.4, we are going to have like a comprehensive uh, translation solution uh, with hard topics like pluralization or gender support tackled properly. Uh, so Chirai and Pascal are going to give you more details on this tomorrow. Another thing that was completely revamped is and GIMate. Uh, Matthias did an excellent job in uh, rewriting the existing Animate uh, solution. He uh, fixes a lot of the existing problems. It's a lot more robust, a lot more uh, dynamic. It's a lot more flexible. And he will have a presentation uh, tomorrow. All right, so Mat Matthias is not only active in the uh, NG Animate module, but he also created 1.3, the NG messages. Uh, one. And this kind of new model, people can love it from the very beginning and started to use it. And as they use it more and more, the new patterns emerged uh, and people started to request, yeah, I would like to have like more includes for messages or more dynamic uh, way of matching messages. So uh, all those requests were tackled uh, in 1.4. Uh, so now you can have uh, several sets of messages to be included. Uh, you can have matching of those messages based on the expressions. Uh, and one thing that we should really mention is that those new directives are playing very well uh, with the built-in ng-repeat and ng uh, directive, which means that you can really uh, create uh, dynamically uh, all the sets of the messages and match them dynamically based on the expression. So it gives like a lot of flexibility. So another uh, component that needs a, a lot of love for quite some time is uh, ng cookies. Right. Yeah. So we, we had this like optional uh, model uh, in AngularJS that isn't like very critical, but still people are requesting features for it. Uh, so 1.4, Shahar stepped in and said like, okay, I'm, I'm going to clean it up uh, and do it more flexible. So he did, uh, and now we can, among other things, set path and domain in the, in the cookie as well. Uh, but like, apart from the features that you can see, there were a lot of changes to the internals of this model. So for example, we removed the polling uh, for the cookies, so now the entire model should be more uh, performant and reliable. Yeah, it's also closest to the uh, oldest and most commented open issue. Yeah, two years old issue. <laughs> <laughs> and this is just a few. It's a lot of things happen in 1.4. Uh, 
you can actually look at the release notes. It's, uh, it's, I hope you actually uh, make very good use of all these features. Now, I, I think there are some really exciting numbers to share here, right? So uh, in Angular 1.4, we wanted to work on performance. Performance uh, in not only in the entire application, because the, the broader application is too difficult, but one part that is critical is digest times. Making a, a digest times as small as possible makes the application snappier, modern. It feels really, it's where Angular shines. So in one four, we stepped in and we make uh, uh, the digest times 30% faster than in Angular 1.3.0. Yeah, so it's, this is very good news. Uh, also, <laughs> right, and like Lucas is way too modest to tell you that actually himself with Jason Vidar did all of those changes. So like Bing, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so now uh, with all those new features, uh, bug fixes, refactorings, and performance improvements. We had to touch a lot of code uh, in the entire code base. So how do you feel, Lucas? Is it like safe to upgrade for people to 1.4? So all my apps, I always run them on top of master. So it's everybody should upgrade as fast as possible. This is good. <laughs> <laughs> like living on the edge, man. Yeah, well, just as I, it's, uh, we make a, a lot of effort to make 1.4 easy to upgrade for everybody. Uh, we had very few breaking changes. All of them are well documented, and the upgrade path is very easy. We support the same browsers as in did in 1.3, so it's good. It's I hope that the community adopts this as fast as possible. Right. So i9 is still here, right? i9 is still there. Yes. Cool. Uh, also, this implies that uh, the faster you move to 1.4, is the core member teams can focus more on 1.4 and 1.5 and last time on backporting things to 1.3. So everyone should upgrade. Uh -huh. So I, I hope that at this point you are getting the feel of what has happened in 1.3 and 1.4 during the last few months. Now let's share some plans for the future. Yeah. So uh, 1.4 is still not out. Once uh, 1.4 is out, we will start planning on 1.5. The plan on 1.5 will happen in the open just like 1.4 uh, happened. Uh, you will be all be able to see uh, what the uh, what the plans are, uh, but what it, one thing that it's critical is community feedback. The one five will be shaped based on the community. Right. So this is really important for us that you've got your say in one, in in terms of what goes into one point five. So just like let us know what is important to you, which bugs you want to have fixed, which pull requests you want to have merged. So just go to the GitHub and leave a comment. It can be plus one or just you know, more elaborate comment. Uh, but just simply uh, let us know what is important for you. And then while preparing the planning meeting for 1.5, we will take all those comments, the most commented on issues and pull requests, and we will try to include them as priority. So uh, one thing that it's clear to us is that 1.5 will have to be a step towards Angular 2. This already happened with a few modules. Uh, a few modules, they shared the same code base between Angular 1 and Angular 2. Uh, it's a, and 1.5 will probably will continue with this uh, work. Cool. So, uh, you know what? It's uh, <laughs> Angular uh, 4 is still not out, but when is uh, Angular 1.5 is going to be out? <laughs> So you want me to answer the favorite questions like yeah, it's, uh, we everybody wants to know this, <laughs> <laughs> right? So obviously we, we can't give you uh, any details on 1.5 release date, um, but if you look at the historical uh, data uh, on the previous releases, you can see that those like kind of the release cycles are getting shorter and shorter. So we kind of cut it down from uh, 17 months for 1.2 to about five six months to 1.4. And once again, we can't commit to the exact date, but we want to have this trend of shorter releases, so we're getting the features faster. So even when we cannot commit to a release date for 1.5, you should expect one to happen in this summer, fall time frame. Cool. So <clears throat> we did a lot in 1.3 and 
Uh, but reflecting on how we work, we can see that there are still some improvements to the entire process. Uh, and actually, I think you can help us with this a lot. So in any popular project like AngularJS, uh, that is used in so many different applications uh, for so many different use cases, there is always more work that the core contributors can do. Uh, and when we were like reflecting on how we are spending our time, we realized that mm, a lot of it goes into trying to reproduce the issues and getting the pull request to the stage that they can be merged. So we would ask you to help us, and here are the very concrete actions that you can take. So there, I know, we know that there are a lot of people who want to make Angular even better. And there are people who uh, have very short time, they have their daily work, and there are people who have the uh, time and they're willing to put the effort into creating a new future. One thing that is key is that whenever you have the time to put uh, work on a new future, is uh, first, it's send an email to Angular Dev, ping any, but any of the core contributors. Don't just start typing and say, yeah, I'm gonna work on this for months and then it will be great. Because that, uh, it's very inefficient. It's, if you don't get feedback early on, then whatever the results are, uh, then it's, it's very hard for the core contributors and for you to make this, uh, to actually the effort for you to land it into Angular Core. So likewise for the issues, like believe us, we really would love to fix all the issues that are open on the GitHub, like just fix them all and, and like have the, the best framework possible. But once again, we realize that we are spending a lot of time trying to understand the issue and reproduce it. Uh, so when you see some glitches in your application and you believe that there is a problem in the framework, try please narrow it down and uh, attach a planker, GS Fiddle, or a similar live reproduction scenario so we can quickly see and confirm the bug and really fix it into the next release. Uh, also, if you could uh, check if the bug uh, happens still on the latest master, it would save us a lot of time. This also is the case, it's if you uh, have the time and you work through the issues and you see that there's uh, some issues that they don't have a reproducible scenario, if you can put there, look at it, say, yeah, I can, was able to reproduce this, done, here's a plunker, that would be great. That helps us make that fix into the next release that it will be one week after and not two or three or five releases after. Really helps a lot, helps us a lot. So with that said, we'd like to thank you all for listening to us uh, and enjoy the conference. Yeah.